Will your dismissive avoidant partner chase you after a breakup or an argument? Are you waiting for them to? Or maybe you've done no contact and you're hoping that with enough space, they'll start chasing you. Or maybe you just had a big fight, but they're not coming after you to make amends or apologize. And you're wondering what's going on here. In this video, we'll explore the reasons a dismissive avoidant won't chase. Hi, I'm Katya Morozova. I'm a personal and relationship coach and NARM practitioner. I help people heal from their breakup, become securely attached, and have the love they want. If that sounds good to you, then please subscribe. I'm also the founder of katiamorozova.me, and if you'd like to book a one-on-one -on -one coaching session, you can do so on that website. The first reason they won't chase you is because they value composure and unreactivity. Many people with the dismissive avoidant attachment style can actually really value their emotional composure. If they grew up in a chaotic environment, if they had a parent who was highly emotionally dysregulated, they may not have had room to express their own emotions, their own distress. Or they, have, they may have learned that being composed was the wisest option given their environment. People who adopt these survival strategies grow up to think that chasing is chaotic or uncontrolled. So the idea of chasing may be distressing for these folks. Next, the dismissive avoidant won't chase you because you two already have a tacit agreement between the two of you where it's expected that the DA partner won't chase. If you're wondering what the heck I'm talking about, let me explain. So if you are the more anxious partner and the dismissive avoidant knows that you'll likely initiate contact with them at some point, and especially if this is already a uh, pattern in your relationship, then they have no reason to chase you. Now, I don't necessarily think this comes from a manipulative or calculating place, but rather from the tacit agreements that get that can get wired up in some relationships from the beginning or over time, where one person is doing more of the initiating. A tacit agreement in a relationship is basically an implied or a silent rule that can get wired up by repetition or by a lack of acknowledgement of that implied rule. And this is by either partner. Another reason the dismissive avoidant won't chase is out of a fear of rejection. Maybe a part of them wants to come after you to resolve things, but the fear of rejection will keep them staying put. This is especially true if they already felt rejected by you. Maybe you got into an argument and it hit a sore spot for them, or maybe you have already rejected them or broken up with them multiple times. The dismissive avoidant is not the type to chase while feeling rejected. Quick question before we move on to the next reason. I'd love to know in the comments, did you initiate the breakup and now want your partner to chase you? Or did they initiate the breakup and you're hoping they will chase? Let me know in the comments below. The dismissive avoidant won't chase if they know they can't offer you what it is that you want. If what you broke up over was in the realm of irreconcilable differences from their point of view, then they won't chase. It's important to understand that even if from your point of view, the relationship is figure outable, if from their point of view, it's not, then they're not going to chase. They're more likely to accept that they can't give you what it is that you want. This can feel like a very practical 
practical conclusion to come to for the dismissive avoidant partner, while for the anxious partner, the anxious partner would much rather that the dismissive avoidant try to figure it out or bargain with the anxious partner because that is what they would do. The dismissive avoidant won't chase because they'll likely refocus their attention away from the relationship. We've talked before about the DA deactivating the attachment system. So this is especially common in times of conflict, tension, and high emotion for the dismissive avoidant. They won't chase you during this time because they have reoriented themselves to other areas of their life. Yes, maybe in the subconscious they know that they need to address things with you, depending on how things ended, but it's often easier to refocus on things that feel more neutral and pleasant in their lives. The DA won't chase you if they have mixed feelings about what will happen next after they chase you. So let's say chasing you leads to repair of the relationship, but they still have mixed feelings about wanting the relationship back, then they probably are not going to chase. So while they may want to make amends and leave things on better terms, the idea of trying to negotiate multiple things at once, like repair and then maybe having to set some kind of boundary if they don't want to reconcile beyond repair, may be too overwhelming for a person with this attachment style. That's a lot of emotional processing and figuring things out out when simply deactivating the attachment system is seemingly a much more efficient way of doing things. Again, this is rarely conscious, but this is how it often works. The final reason the dismissive avoidant won't chase is because they don't know that they're supposed to chase you. This reason might actually be the most important reason because this is the one that you actually have some power over. So sometimes I work with people who tell me that they went through a breakup with their partner, that they actually broke up with their partner or initiated some type of discussion that quickly devolved and pushed their partner away. And then they'll often tell me that they have the expectation or desire that their partner will come after them, which is interesting because they're the ones who seemingly ended the relationship or they'll be confused that their partner isn't coming back even though they know that they said that they didn't want their partner back or said some harsh things that might deter a partner or even a dismissive avoidant partner from coming back to them. So this type of thinking often comes from a wound, usually a wound where you think that you're not good enough. So people with this wound often believe that if their partner comes after them, that it means that they're enough. But when their partner doesn't, they use it as evidence that they are not. They use this to confirm what they already believe about themselves, that they aren't enough. If this sounds like you, then I recommend working on your attachment style because as long as you continue to subconsciously act out and push your partners away, it will be very difficult for you to maintain a healthy and secure relationship in your life or you will keep bonding to partners that are bound to hurt you because that's what you expect. When you can address the not enough wound with attachment work, you can become secure in your relationships and attract partners who respect you and are receptive to conflict resolution. And when you have a stronger sense of value in yourself, in your relationships, and when you believe that what you have to say is valuable and that your needs and your grievances matter, you are more likely to approach conflict from a much more even keeled and emotionally regulated place where your partner can hear you. If this sounds like something you'd like to explore, then I recommend booking a one-on-one -on -one coaching session where we can begin to address your attachment challenges at their root. 
attachment focused coaching is for you if you have relationship anxiety and traditional therapy hasn't been able to fully address it. If your relationships feel like a continuous roller coaster ride and you're ready to get off, and if you get the sense that you might be subconsciously sabotaging your relationships and you'd like to get to the root of what that's all about. As well, if you like to feel confident and secure in your relationships, and if you find yourself realizing that knowing your history or your triggers doesn't necessarily change how you feel and behave, and you'd like to address the gap between logic and emotion and behavior so that you can feel better and make better choices in your relationships, then I would highly recommend booking a one-on-one coaching session. Um, You can do so in the link in the description or the comments. That link will take you to my website, katiamorozova.me forward slash single dash session, where you can look at my live calendar and securely sign up for a session using Square Checkout. Did you like this video? If so, please hit like and subscribe. If you want to watch more videos on the dismissive avoidant attachment style and on how to become securely attached. Next up is my video on the stages a dismissive avoidant goes through during no contact. You can watch that right up here. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.